Greetings, this is Dr. Sandra Cabot. Welcome to my series of videos on high blood pressure. These three videos will be very helpful for people with difficult to control high blood pressure and will provide you with a holistic approach to overcome the causes of high blood pressure. My videos will also help you to reduce the risk of potentially dangerous complications of high blood pressure, such as strokes, heart attacks, and heart failure. Persistently high blood pressure is a common problem and is known as hypertension. Hypertension means that the pressure inside your arteries is too high. The arteries are pipes through which blood flows to your organs and pipes that have too much pressure become damaged and prematurely worn. Damaged pipes are also prone to rupture and this can cause a stroke. High blood pressure can be called the silent killer as it slowly and insidiously damages the walls of the blood vessels and the internal organs supplied by these blood vessels. The organs most vulnerable to damage are the heart, brain and kidneys. Even if your blood pressure is only moderately elevated, over the years it can cause huge damage and high blood pressure should not be accepted. Unfortunately, many people underestimate the damage that high blood pressure can cause. For example, they have an aversion to taking their medication or forget to take their medication or have a confused belief system that they can control their blood pressure with herbal products or stress management alone. The reality is that the proper control of blood pressure needs a holistic approach which if implemented can prevent organ damage and add many years to your life. Let's look at the different types of hypertension. Firstly, primary or essential hypertension, which is the most common type and refers to high blood pressure with no one specific cause. The other type of blood pressure is secondary hypertension and it refers to high blood pressure being the result of another underlying condition. For example, kidney disease or an endocrine, in brackets, hormonal disease. Let's look at how do you measure blood pressure. Well, blood pressure readings will change given one's age, exercise status and whether they are standing or sitting. Your healthcare practitioner will measure your blood pressure using a blood pressure cuff placed on your upper arm. If the size of the cuff is too small for your arm, then a falsely high blood pressure reading may result. If a blood pressure reading is high, many doctors will measure it again on both arms and in the sitting and standing position. Normal blood pressure is generally considered to be less than 140 over 90. There are two readings. The upper reading is the systolic blood pressure. It's the top number of your measurement and represents the maximum pressure in the arteries when the heart contracts and pumps blood out into the arteries. The bottom reading is known as diastolic blood pressure and is the bottom number of your measurement and represents the minimum pressure in the arteries between heart contractions when the heart relaxes to fill with blood. A blood pressure reading of 140 over 90 means your systolic blood pressure was 140 and your diastolic blood pressure was 90. Blood pressure is very dynamic 
and it is much more dangerous if high levels are sustained as opposed to short periods of raised blood pressure. It is normal for blood pressure to rise during exercise and the more vigorous the exercise, the higher the blood pressure will rise. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends waiting for 30 minutes after you exercise to take your blood pressure reading. It can take several hours after exercise for your blood pressure to return to its typical level. If your blood pressure is still high, for more than two hours after exercise, consult your doctor. The higher your physical fitness, the more quickly your blood pressure will return to your typical range. An excellent test to ask your doctor to order for you is called 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. This test gives accurate blood pressure readings during your normal day and during sleep. We look for the average blood pressure reading and for any dangerous spikes over 24 hours. The 24 hour blood pressure monitor test is a great test for people who get white coat hypertension which is raised blood pressure whenever they see the doctor but not at other times. I will admit that seeing a doctor can be scary especially if the doctor is going to chastise you for being naughty or give you bad news. A wise investment is a home do-it-yourself blood pressure measuring machine to monitor the effects of stress, exercise, foods, coffee, alcohol and the time of the day on your blood pressure. Some people will notice that their blood pressure will rise significantly if they eat a big meal, especially if they overeat. So let's look at the causes of high blood pressure. We'll start with essential or primary hypertension. The vast majority of hypertension is primary or essential in cause. Often there are several factors combined together causing primary hypertension, such as genetic tendencies, insulin resistance, or hardening of the arteries. Disease blood vessels become narrowed and inflexible and thus the heart must exert more pressure to pump the blood through the blood vessels. Hardened blood vessels are less elastic and do not dilate properly, which increases the pressure inside them. Another cause of essential hypertension is the metabolic problem of insulin resistance also known as Syndrome X, which can cause high blood pressure as well as diabetes type 2. In people with insulin resistance, the blood levels of insulin in the fasting state are elevated and stay too high after a glucose tolerance blood test. Basically, people with insulin resistance are intolerant to high carbohydrate foods. Insulin resistance is often associated with weight excess and a fatty liver, which can also raise blood pressure. Improving your liver function will help you lose weight and reduce high blood pressure. Another cause of essential hypertension is an undiagnosed deficiency of the minerals magnesium and potassium, which can worsen high blood pressure. Blood tests to check the level of magnesium and potassium in your body are not a good indicator of total body levels of magnesium or potassium. This is because magnesium is mainly found in the bones and along with potassium inside your cells. Stress and anxiety can also cause essential hypertension because they release adrenaline and cortisol which increases the heart rate and blood pressure. If you cannot relax and calm your mind, this is not good for high blood pressure. Things like yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, meditation, as well as exercising in nature are good ways to relax. Now let's look at secondary hypertension, which is secondary to an underlying specific cause 
Kidney disease is a common cause of high blood pressure and is easily tested for with blood and urine tests. An ultrasound scan of the kidneys may detect kidney damage. If you have been diagnosed with so-called essential hypertension, which is impossible to control with medication, you must see a specialist such as an endocrinologist who will investigate you for an underlying missed cause. Another cause of secondary hypertension can be a tumour in the adrenal glands or elsewhere in the body which produces excess quantities of adrenaline and this can cause very high spikes in blood pressure. This can be easily tested for with blood and urine tests. Another cause of secondary hypertension can be an overactive thyroid gland which can cause a racing heartbeat and high blood pressure and this is easily checked for with a blood test for thyroid function. Another cause of secondary hypertension is sleep apnea. This can cause severe hypertension and a high risk of strokes. It must be investigated in a sleep laboratory and can be effectively treated. Now let's look at the symptoms of high blood pressure. It is important to have your blood pressure checked regularly as elevated blood pressure often does not produce any symptoms. Possible symptoms of high blood pressure could include headaches, dizziness, poor vision, ringing in the ears, chest pains, palpitations or racing heartbeat, a thumping heartbeat or shortness of breath. If you get regular headaches, especially if they are pounding headaches, see a neurologist to exclude a cerebral aneurysm. Such an aneurysm can rupture, causing a sudden, severe, fatal stroke. A cerebral aneurysm is a weakened bubble-like area in an artery in the brain which becomes stretched and weakened by high blood pressure inside it. The aneurysm can be clipped off surgically, preventing a massive and often fatal stroke. What are the complications of persistently high blood pressure? Elevated blood pressure can be extremely dangerous and causes an increased risk of heart attacks, strokes, dementia, kidney disease and blindness. The good news is that most of these complications can be prevented by controlling high blood pressure. It is sad that many patients with high blood pressure are unaware of the dangers of poorly controlled blood pressure. It is generally always possible to control even very high blood pressure if a holistic approach is used. This may require lifestyle changes, using antihypertensive drugs and nutritional medicine. It's wise to visit an eye specialist known as an ophthalmologist as examination of the retina at the back of the eye can be a reliable index of the extent of damaged blood vessels throughout the body that's been caused by high blood pressure. Now I'd like to share two case histories with you about high blood pressure. The first one involves my father who died in 1989 at the age of 71 with a massive stroke caused by high blood pressure. After the first brain hemorrhage, he had another bleed seven days later, became unconscious and passed away. I am now in the year 2023, age 71, and I have a family history of high blood pressure, but I know how to control it, so I am fortunate. My father was too young to die, as he was otherwise healthy and had a good quality of life. I was aged 37 at the time of his death and I was very surprised and upset. My father's brother died at age 59 with a severe stroke caused by high blood pressure and I suspect they may have both had cerebral aneurysms. 
In those days, we did not have MRI scans to detect aneurysms. My father lived interstate, so I did not see him much, but I knew he took some medications for high blood pressure. If I had been living near him, I would have insisted he took magnesium and vitamin C, along with his medications. I would have given him a do-it-yourself home blood pressure monitoring machine to test for dangerous spikes or trends in his blood pressure, but they were not commonly used in those days. My mother never had high blood pressure in her long lifespan of 94 years, and she did smoke and did not exercise regularly. So we can see that when it comes to blood pressure and lifespan, genetics are very important. Another interesting case history involves a patient of mine who had a fatty liver. She had very high blood pressure, around 240 on 140. That's a scary level. She was in her early 50s and was overweight and highly stressed. Even though she was taking five different blood pressure medications at the same time when she consulted me, her blood pressure was seriously out of control. She was taking beta blockers, calcium blockers, ACE inhibitor drugs, an anti-adrenergic drug called clonidine and a diuretic drug all at the same time. The interaction of all these drugs was affecting her ability to think and she thought she was getting dementia. She was very scared of having a stroke and losing her mind. I said to her, my dear, you have a fatty liver and your liver is not functioning well and is unable to break down or metabolize and eliminate all these drugs. These drugs are interacting with each other and screwing up your brain chemicals. No wonder your brain is not working. I immediately stopped four of her antihypertensive drugs and I sent her to a health retreat to get away from the stress. At the retreat, she did exercise, Pilates, raw vegetable juicing and got more sleep. I gave her supplements of magnesium, Livertone Plus for her liver and Super Vitamin K to soften her arteries. She stayed at the retreat for two weeks and came back to see me. When I measured her blood pressure, it was down to 150 on 80 and her heart electrocardiogram, ECG, was normal. I have found that the liver plays a vital role in maintaining a normal blood pressure and if antihypertensive drugs are not working, you'll find that holistic medicine often will. Reversing a fatty liver is not difficult and if you'd like to know how to do it, see my many videos on reversing fatty liver on YouTube and liverdoctor.com. It is vital to stay monitored by your own doctor and there is so much you can do yourself to bring your blood pressure down into the healthy range. My next video on high blood pressure will explain life-saving strategies to help you control the dangerous condition of high blood pressure. So I hope you've enjoyed my first video on high blood pressure and if you have, please click like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And thanks for listening.